Greetings everyone, Rhonda with JTribe Creations here. I'm really excited to be bringing you this uh, video series on how to do batik art, which is a resist art. I won't get into a lot of details on the history of it or anything like that, um, but basically you use waxes to do a resist to keep dye from being in one certain spot and there are many different ways to actually go about doing it and to remove the waxes but this is how I do it this is my design and I'm using it as the example this is the finished shirt so what you're going to be watching is the process that I went through to create this design um, hope you'll stay tuned and yeah that's it I'm really excited okay so this is the starting of a tea. I have already taken the shirt. It's 100% cotton. You can batik almost anything that you can tie dye. Um, cotton, hemp, rayon, silk. Uh, silk's a little bit harder to work with because it's so delicate. But um, for this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to do it on a shirt the way that I do the ones that I sell. So this shirt's already been soaked in soda ash to bring up its pH level so the dye will stick to it. Some people do that after when they've already done the design and they're going to do their overall dye of the shirt. I don't do it. That's how I learned how to do it. So that's how I'm going to teach you how to do it. So I'm going to put the spear design that I made about a year ago on this shirt. Now you can freehand draw or whatever, you know, but... Um, I'm going to put this on. So what I'm going to do is put it under here. Turn on my light box so I can see the design of this shirt. If you don't have a light box and you want to trace, uh, when I very first started, I actually would tape my design to a window and hang the shirt up over it and, and trace it that way. However, you want to use it to get it on there. So, I want to make sure it's pretty even on there. And these are washable markers. There's cheap markers like you get for little kids to draw with. If they get, you know, dye on them, it, it washes off or whatever. Um, this ink isn't, is impermanent. So, just comes off. So, I am just going to trace this design with the marker. And these lines are actually where I'm going to put my resist, my mix of waxes. Now, I'll go into a little bit more detail about that when I bring my wax out to show you. And you don't even have to draw out something. You can freehand with your wax, but um, because I want to get this design detail out, I'm going to do it that way. And get my little fluffy clouds here. And normally I just draw everything out in one color. It's not that big a deal to me because I know where my color placements are, but I'm going to do it in two different colors so that it will be easier to show you later on from Little Mountains. This design is actually inspired by the bear encounter I had in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Just walking around taking pictures by a stream and thought it was a big old dog pulling up on me and nope, it was a baby bear followed by mama bear. And later that evening, the cabin, it was a friend of ours, parents, we were staying in it. Um, bears started jumping up and down on the roof because honeybees had set up under the tin roof. And the bears were trying to rip the, the tin off to get to the honey. So all night long, I was like freaking out. So, <laughs> so that's the kind of the story behind this design. I've had a couple of other bear encounters up there too, but uh, that was the closest one. Uh, it, it was crazy because I had my camera out and I 
didn't even take a picture and it was right there in front of my face anyway so that's the design for the bear the next thing I'm gonna do is take a piece of wax paper and I want to see how big it's my design like that and I am going to take this piece of cardboard you can see it has a lot of wax on it already um, I actually have a few boards that are totally waxed over and if I'm not using a design with color I can just uh, use it and it's time for just a plain white design so when you color color it in these lines are actually going to be drawn out in wax first and the wax acts as the resist so everywhere that the line is the dye won't get so now what i'm going to do is because i have that fold it up in there like this So this is just a really cheap duck general like masking tape. I'm gonna take a little bit of it. We're gonna use it to kind of hold the shirt in place, all right? Now there's other ways you can do this. <clears throat> Some people will actually like hold the design out so that they can um, like have a layer in between it. Um, I've seen people put it uh, shoe boxes over it. Um, there's frames you can get that you can tack it to it. But I like this because it lays flat and I can wax it and paint it and I don't have to worry about it's shifting on the box and I can actually put something on while these are drying and stack them up and they don't touch each other and um, I can be more productive and make more of them. But anyway, this is just a little trick that I picked up. 